Good morning, distinguished members of the panel, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm here to share my insight on how to realize the new competitiveness of Sri Lankan manufacturing. Let's determine the size of our potential. Let's do the math. We have about 20 million people. Employable workforce is about 50%. 40% in the service sector. Agriculture sector would be about 30. So what's available for manufacturing is about 30%. That's about 3 million people. So if you say an average size of a manufacturing plant be say 1,000 employees, we only got 3,000 factories to work with. Constraints in Sri Lankan manufacturing. A large enough workforce to get into large scale manufacturing. Uh, Blue-collar jobs are not really considered classy enough, and manufacturing sector is squeezed now between agriculture and the service sector. So you have people from agricultural sector trying to move up to manufacturing who will probably be not really suitable for the manufacturing sector, and once in the manufacturing will be moving into the service sector. Uh, some examples from our own experience for our manufacturing, when we try to advertise to get 100 people, we barely get about 100, 150 uh, applications. But for our BPO sector, when we put for 100 applications, we get 1,000 uh, applications coming in to fill 100 vacancies. So we see a huge shift taking place, uh, people moving out of the manufacturing sector. We need to look at the national policy and a framework for the 3 million people in the manufacturing sector. We must build the innovation and manufacturing culture in schools. Introduce Microbit. Have you heard of Microbit? It's a small computer that um, BBC developed to inculcate the innovation culture in the UK. And it has been very, very successful there. And it has gone all over the world. And I think now Sri Lanka, also the cabinet just approved to launch that in the school curriculum. We should start teaching kids on technology, SOLIDWORKS, 5S, Lean, and Six Sigma in school so that people would, from younger days would want to get into manufacturing and they see being in manufacturing is a, is a cool, cool thing. And teach uh, value-added and non-value-added activities in school so that, you know, in a lot of our companies we see we are spending a lot of time doing a lot of non-value-added activities. And if we can get children trained from younger days, we should be able to improve our productivity. What's the opportunities we've got? We have a highly trainable staff. Our geographic location is fantastic. We have good markets. I mean, north of Sri Lanka is India. And then if you go to the east, we've got uh, Southeast Asia and, and the Middle East on the west. So we, we, I think we are very well situated. And then we should be able to build Sri Lankan brands globally. If we were to harness this potential, you know, it's certainly not going to come to us on a silver platter. You know, we all need to work hard and do our part to make it happen. We need to plant the seeds today so that our future generations can really benefit. So what, what do we really need to do? We need to move out of low cost, low skill manufacturing, move into high end luxury goods manufacturing. Gradually we should move out of being a subcontracting manufacturing to manufacture our own brands in Sri Lanka. We must have our own European and US businesses. Uh, we have to buy them and then do the manufacturing in Sri Lanka and then use Sri Lanka as a hub to export right across the world. You know, manufacturing comes with design, art, and technology. New curriculums need to be designed so that we could be future ready. You know, 65% of the jobs of the children who are in kindergarten has not been invented yet. So how could governments be ready for the future, right? So we need to really think what we need to be teaching our kids for tomorrow's world. 
Creating a collaborative culture, I think this is one of the most important things we ought to be doing. Electronics, mechanical engineering, software, combined with art and design is the new recipe for design manufacturing. Most departments in the universities are working in silos. Unless these departments start to collaborate, we won't be able to really produce really nice stuff. I want to talk to you about Murano glass. Murano is a small island near Venice, but world famous for glass and um, glass craftsmanship. For example, this piece of glass, they would take about 20 minutes to produce, about three people, and they'll sell it for about a million rupees. It would probably cost about 100,000 rupees to produce or less. Now, why would people pay such price for, for glass? But because it's art and it has built a tradition of, uh, uh, of pride in, in manufacturing over a lo long period of time. And today, uh, Murano is ru running out of craftsmen. So could this be something Sri Lanka should look at, bringing um, craftsmanship like this to Sri Lanka and developing our skills with art? I would like to talk about the artisans of India. These are hand-blown glass in India. It's called an asteroid uh, a chandelier for, for a living room. And they're selling this also for about a million rupees. Now compared to that tiny little piece in uh, glass in Mirano no, that was the same price. Why? Because it's in India and they have not built that brand equity for glass. I would like to now talk a little bit about how do we harness our potential in manufacturing using another country. Uh, I just returned from Bangladesh a week back and if we can use, because Bangladesh has about 200 million people, and we are running short of people for our manufacturing. If we can set up a Sri Lankan business park in Bangladesh, so that Sri Lankan companies, if we need cheaper labor and uh, low-cost manufacturing, we can do it there, but still owned by Sri Lankans. We've been working very closely now with the Sri Lanka Bangladesh Chamber of Commerce and Industry, wonderful people. Uh, they have really set up a high standard for Sri Lanka. Over there, we have a big Sri Lankan professional community over there who is really ever ready to help any Sri Lankan company to establish over there. And Bangladesh has a very high regard for, for Sri Lankans and Sri Lankan companies. So I think this is an area that we should really look at this potential. 3D printing. 3D printing would really revolutionize our manufacturing. And this shoe is 3D printed. Imagine how this would impact the shoe industry. Right now, I think it's gonna, when it comes in, it's gonna be huge. Um, right now, we've been looking at investing on the 3D printers. We got a small printer for, for R&D work. But what's happening is the technology is improving every year so and it's still very expensive for a very high-end 3d printers but you don't feel like investing today because you know next year the equipment is going to be even better so when the technology matures i think it's going to spread like wildfire so manufacturing industry needs to be really careful for example in our tool manufacturing facility uh, we have about five or six machines that makes all the plastic injection molding tools, but the same could be done with a 3D printer. And it costs the same amount to set up a brand new one, would be about 100 million rupees, and a 3D printer of that nature would also be 100 million. So if I were to set up a brand new tool making facility, I'd probably go with a 3D printer. So, but for people who are already in, it does not make sense because you've already done that investment. But time to come, it will, it will really change the world. And the future is smart and green technologies. It has to be energy saving, environmentally friendly, and IoT. 
Keep in mind these buzzwords when you are looking at embarking on new products or industries, because this is where the future is going to be. I just heard this morning in the news that by 2040, UK is going to ban all diesel and, and petrol vehicles. So there are huge changes that's going to take place. So in conclusion, I want to emphasize that Sri Lanka must build global brands. We need to acquire companies from the West and relocate the manufacturing to Sri Lanka. That's the only way that we can jumpstart a technology revolution in Sri Lanka. In our company, we have set up a policy that every year we would buy a foreign um, um, or a European, do a European acquisition. And the last three years, we've been doing that consistently. We first started with a Belgium company, then we bought a UK company, and this year we've bought a US company. And, and thereby, we are gaining a lot of experience on how, how markets operate. And, and, and when we compare with the people and the cultures, we, we also learn a lot. So I don't know whether this is the right thing for our company, but in 10 years' time, I can really say whether this was really successful or not. But now I know it's the only way that we could help Sri Lanka grow. Uh, and I would also urge you to start looking at going into foreign markets, building Sri Lankan brands globally, and doing acquisitions over there. Thank you very much.